So, you want to know how to actually make good hitboxes? Well then, let me show you how it's done. Let's start with learning what methods we can use. So, insert local script inside starter player scripts, get local player, user input service, replicated storage, and a remote. Use input begun event to connect a function, get input, and GPA, which is a game processed event. Make a check if GPA, then return. So our function doesn't run while we're using chart or something like that. Make a check if input.keycode is equal to enum.keycode.yourdesired keycode and fire server with a keycode like this. Insert script inside of a server script service, get replicated storage and remote. Connect a function using on server event, get player and keycode. Make a check for keycode and now we are ready to make hitboxes. First is gonna be dot dodged event. All we need to do is create part, assign empty table, use dot touched event to connect a function, get part, check if part has a parent, check if it is a descendant of a player.character so we don't hit ourselves, check if a part.parent has a humanoid inside of it, and check if part.parent inside of our table so we don't hit one character twice add part dot parent to a table and decrease humanoid health this is probably the worst method to make melee hitboxes it's inaccurate performance heavy and should literally never be used for this though it would be a pretty good choice for something stationary like landmines also has a strange behavior when it wouldn't detect parts that are completely inside of a hitbox Next one is get parts in part. Create new part, assign overlap params dot new, set filter type to exclude, set filter descendants instances to player dot character. Also you can add other tables you want to ignore. Use get parts in part with our part and params and just loop through the output table like this. This one is much better choice for melee hitboxes than dot dodged event. Let's very quick see the next one and compare them. This one called get part bounce in box. We don't really need part here. It's only for visuals. The rest is the same, except here we put hitbox C frame and size instead of an already existing part. So, what's the difference between get parts in part and get part bounce in box? Get parts in part requires an already existing part to work, while get part bounce in box doesn't. This could be both a good thing and bad thing. Good because it allows you to make hitboxes of different shapes, like a cylinder for instance, while get parts bound in box is limited to just rectangular prisms or a sphere. And bad because it takes more performance. Also, get part bound in box, unlike all other methods, only detects part bound in boxes, while get parts in part and all other ones detect actual geometry of the part. In conclusion, get parts in part is more precise but takes up more resources. On the other hand, get part bounds in box much faster but can cause some problems if you need high precision. Most of the time you should just be using get part bounds in box. Alright, next is get part bounds in radius. Same thing as get part bounds in box, but it's a sphere. Also, you would need a position instead of a C frame and a number for a radius instead of a vector 3. Next one is Raycast. Again, a terrible choice for a melee hitbox, but a great one for guns. Basically, it shoots an invisible beam that goes until it hits something and returns the instance it hit along with the distance it had to travel from initial position to detected part. So, Assign new raycast params, set filter type to inu.raycast filter type dot exclude, set ray starting position and a direction, which you can easily get with cframe.look vector. Use workspace raycast with starting position and a direction multiplied by a desired range of the beam. Check if it returned anything, get what it detected with result.instance and do all of this again. Here's the code how you can visualize it. 
And also I probably should say that this beam can only detect one instance at a time. So if it hits something, it's not going to detect anything else. If you want it to keep going, you will have to create another from the hit position. Next thing is shape cast. Basically the same thing as the ray cast, but instead of one dimensional line, you can use literally any part to fire a ray shape like it. Here's some visual examples how it works. Okay, so for the script, let's get our tetrahedron so I can flex my ability to use Google. I put mine inside replicated storage, cloned it, and just put it in a place of starting position using workspace shape cast. Also, I should probably mention that it will ignore everything that touched initial cast part. Next is sphere cast and block cast. Exactly the same as shape cast, but it's a sphere or a rectangular prism, respectively. The only difference, you just have to put radius here for sphere cast and vector 3 size for block cast. That's all. All of this is great, but sometimes all you need is a simple distance check. You'll need a table of all available characters, use for in to loop through it, calculate distance between player's primary part and target character's primary part using dot magnitude and check if result is less or equal to desired range. Also, if player is inside of your table, check if target's primary part is descendant of a player character. Finally, there is a region 3, but as you can see, it's deprecated, which means you shouldn't use it, but I'll still show you how to in case you want for some reason. So, to make it work, we need to get two corners of our imaginary part, just like with Minecraft with an X thingy. You can do that by adding or subtracting size of a region divided by 2 from its position. After that, create a new region 3.new with both of the corners and use workspace find parts in region 3 with your region, a table you want to ignore, yes only one, and a maximum amount of parts to detect. Default is 20. Alright, let's sum that up real quick. Although dot touched event is a terrible choice for hitboxes, it would be a great one for long-lasting stationary objects like landmines. Raycast shouldn't be used for melee hitboxes, even though it is a number one choice for guns. Get part bounce hitbox is usually a superior choice for melee hitboxes. But if you need more precision and control of hitbox shape, then get parts in part is for you. Magnitude is very useful when making skills that require distance checks. And while shape cast isn't really a viable option for melee hitboxes, it could be with the help of a designated module. Now that you are familiar with methods used for hitbox creation, we're gonna need to talk about network latency. Currently, we send requests from client to server and create hitbox on it. Problem is, there is a delay between client firing remote and server receiving it. You may know it as ping. We're looking only on half of it though, because ping is calculated by sending requests from client to server and back. So you may ask, why don't just create hitbox on client to remove delay entirely? Well, ever heard about exploits? Basically, everything on client side can be altered by third-party programs. So my guy can just say, um, actually, the hitbox size isn't 5x5x5, five by five by five. it's the whole map. And Roblox just gonna say okay. So what do we do then? There is a couple solutions. The easiest one is just fire server before the attack happens. So, fire a remote with server time. Plus animation wind up. Then go to the server, subtract server time from the time that we passed through the remote, and if the result is more than zero, then wait it. But this requires attack to have some wind up, and if it's more than half of the ping, then the delay will be gone. But if you can't afford such luxury as wind up on your attacks, guns for example, you can try using sanity checks. 
So create hitbox on client and fire server if it hit. There you run some checks to verify hit like distance, position, cooldown, is there a line of sight. Basically we're trying to validate a hit from a client on the server. It's pretty hard to get it right, but if you do, this can be a very good solution. There is also this thing called lag compensation. You know how there is a delay between player doing something on client and server updating? Well, that applies to other players too. Shocking, I know. So, while other player is running, server sees his position behind what he sees, and you see his position behind the position that server sees. To combat that, we can try taking snapshots of each player's position and use them to rewind player's position to what our client saw half a ping ago. Though nobody on Roblox has managed to get it properly working. I searched literally everywhere and yet this is the best I could get. Even if someone managed to get it right, there still could be issues because most of the time player ping is far from the definition of stable. And last thing you can do is use velocity prediction. So fire server, create hitbox and predict where hitbox should be using player velocity. That won't solve hitbox a bit late, but at least it's at the right position. So the first one should be used with pretty much all attacks that have wind up. And for those without wind up, you should be using sanity checks or lack compensation if you figure out how. And velocity prediction should only be used if you can get sanity checks right, or maybe it also can be useful with attacks that move your character very fast. And for the love of myself, if you're making single player game, just do hitboxes on client. Let people have their fun. Now I'm going to give you a bunch of modules that I found while making a research for this video. Shapecast hitbox allows you to make good hitboxes with shapecast. Better replication. Improves latency with custom replication. Although it doesn't have any sanity checks, so you're going to have to make them yourself. I recommend you analyzing the code if you want to try making luck compensation. Secure cast. Luck compensation for project house. Has the same problem as mine, but could be useful for research. Original author abandoned this module, but somebody say they are gonna make a fork. Muchacho hitbox allows you to make velocity predicted hitbox and some other stuff. Also comment if you want me to make a video on any of these modules. And finally I'm going to give you some general advice on making hitboxes. I have some examples right here, so let's start with guns. So you have to fire a ray from your camera to your cursor. And it doesn't matter if your game is first or third person. You don't start a ray from a gun itself. There are some games that do this, but I'm like everyone hates it, so yeah. For bare hands combat, you don't align hitboxes to players' limbs, but instead create a box in front of them like that. Now to the swords. Uh, 9 out of 10 times you should just make a horizontal hitbox instead of following slash trajectory. Or something like this could happen. Bruh. Still, if you have something like a vertical slash, you should just make a vertical hitbox. Also, you want to make sure that there is absolutely no gap between hitbox and character. So you won't just hug your enemies instead of dealing damage. For swords you might go as far as extending hitbox to half of a character. Also, for the things like beams or other complex shapes, you probably think we should always use hitbox shape like it. But often, if it's not too big, a simple cube would do just fine. Alright, that would be everything. Hopefully, I was able to teach you one thing or another. Feel free to correct me if I got anything wrong. All modules, along with my attempted luck compensation, are linked in the description. Comment what would you like to see next, and go watch my previous video where I teach you how to make rag dolls. Leave me a like if you have some to spare, and goodbye.